This is quite possibly the rarest fast food menu item in the world, and it's back for a very limited time. We're not gonna miss. Okay, so today is the day. We are covering the McRib. Hang on one second. We're gonna get to the sandwich, but with a video this important, we have a very important announcement. The Winter Collection merch drops today. Okay. By the way, Vikram's editing this, not me. Mm -hmm. I saw the news, yes. I keep my eyes peeled. All right, I see everything. I don't miss anything. But the McRib, all right, we're, that's the subject we're talking about today. <sighs> this is one of those ultra cult foods because it's so rare. I think it's been back like just a few times over the last like 10 years or something wild like that. Don't quote me on that because I'm not 100% sure. But the point is, it's basically a rib sandwich that's got barbecue sauce, pickles, onions, and it's on like a hoagie style sort of bun thing shape bread. This recipe has been requested since the beginning of the Butt Better series. So with all that said, let's make this, shall we? Okay, fellas, we're back at McDonald's again. Wow, feels like just yesterday we were doing the hash brown and now this, this is a special moment. This is a little blip in time. What if they don't have it yet? I'm nervous. <laughs> oh, it's, it's there! Yo! There's actually nobody here. I thought there was gonna be a big line. I guess nobody actually cares. Hi, uh, can I get three McRibs? Oh my god. I'm sorry. Thank you. What the hell am I smelling? It smells like a creamy pickle. Is he already done? Damn, I didn't know they were that fast. Dog, chill. Can a man inspect his McRib? Woo! We've got... The bag. Why did they, they put the Big Mac bag? They're supposed to give me the McRib bag. They didn't give me the McRib bag. It's fine. I've actually never had this before. I'm kind of excited. You're gonna say that this is what deserves clout? This. Ah, oh. It's like it wants to talk or it's like been knocked out. Somebody like clocked this thing in the jaw and it's just like, uh. what are you tell me? Is it bad? No, it tastes all right. All I taste is barbecue sauce. That is it. But there's a certain slimy quality to it. It's a specialty item. It tastes all right. But I think that we need to make something that's actually worthy of the clout. All right, so to get things started, let's discuss this almost hoagie-esque bread. I decided to use sesame seeds instead of semolina to top these, but that's optional and I just think it tastes better, whatever. Let's start with a simple dough. You'll need one and a half cups or 350 milliliters of lukewarm water around 95 Fahrenheit or 35 Celsius. Whisk in two and a half teaspoons or seven grams of instant yeast and let it sit at room temp for about 10 minutes. In the bowl of a stand mixer, whisk together three and a half cups or 525 grams of all-purpose flour two teaspoons or seven grams of fine sea salt, and one tablespoon or 14 grams of granulated sugar. Whisk that together until thoroughly combined. Now pop that brother on the stand mixer with the dough spiral attachment because I freaking hate the dough hook one. Start mixing that on medium low speed, then add in your yeasty water juice stuff. Keep mixing that for three to four minutes or until you get a nice smooth elastic dough. Now while the mixture is still mixing, go ahead and add three tablespoons or 42 grams of softened unsalted butter. And you're gonna do that around one tablespoon at a time until all of it is added. Once the butter is incorporated fully and the dough is looking nice and homogenized, form it into a light ball, plop it into a greased bowl, cover it with plastic wrap that's also been greased and give it a name that deserves respect. Then just let it rise at room temp for one to one and a half hours or until doubled. Now that your dough is all grown up and living a happy life, punch all the air out of it, place it on a lightly floured work surface and divide it into six even pieces. And if you're neurotic like me, you'll want each piece to weigh around 150 grams. Shape each piece into a light ball by bringing in the sides to the center, flipping it over so it's seam side down, rolling it in a circular motion while maintaining constant contact with your work surface. Now once you have all your balls, grab one of them and roll it into a six inch log, pressing slightly harder when reaching the ends so that they look nice and tapered. Now once you've shaped all of your dough, pour a quarter cup of sesame seeds onto a medium plate, make sure they're nice and spread out. In a separate bowl, mix together one egg white and a splash of milk until completely combined. Then to coat your bread, brush the top of your dough log with that egg wash, carefully flip them over and 
roll the egg washed side around in your sesame seeds until nicely coated. Then place it on a baking sheet lined with parchment paper and repeat that process with the rest of your dough. Then just cover that baking sheet with another rimmed baking sheet, inverted of course, and let them proof for 30 minutes. As a side note, I did use a second half sheet for the remaining two pieces of dough, so I didn't risk them touching when baking, but it's not a huge issue. Now while it's rising, preheat your oven to 425 Fahrenheit or 220 Celsius. Then once your dough is proofed and the oven is hot, get a nice razor, lame, or very sharp knife and score your dough lengthwise at a slight angle. Once each piece of dough is scored, spray them lightly with water, place them in your preheated oven, spritz the walls of the oven with water, not the glass window unless you want it to shatter, that's up to you, and bake for 15 to 18 minutes or until they emerge of a luminous, beautiful golden brown. Then pull them out and let them cool on a wire rack until completely cool. Now let's talk ribs. This can be done up to three days ahead of time. You're gonna need a large rack of ribs, either baby back or spare ribs. I will say that baby back are a little easier to manage. Either way, in a medium sized bowl, add one tablespoon of kosher salt, two tablespoons of dark brown sugar, two teaspoons of garlic powder, two teaspoons of mustard powder, two teaspoons of smoked paprika, <sighs> and two teaspoons of ground white pepper. Mix together until combined. And before you season your ribs, be sure to remove the membrane. All right, it's real easy. Just sort of finger your way under there. Then grab the edge with a paper towel and it should just kind of pull right off like that. Do not skip that, all right? It's not gonna cook, just take it off. Then season your ribs all over with every last ounce of your spice mix. Rub it in nicely, then lay your ribs on two large sheets of tin foil. Add a little splash of sherry vinegar if you like, then tightly wrap it up so there are no leaks. Place it on a rim baking sheet and then into the oven at 300 Fahrenheit for three to three and a half hours, or until they're so tender that their bones just about fly right out when you move them. Now, obviously, while we're waiting for our ribs, we should go ahead and make a barbecue sauce. In a medium sized sauce pot, add one cup of brown sugar, one cup of ketchup, three tablespoons of blackstrap molasses, a quarter cup of sherry vinegar, one tablespoon of garlic powder, one tablespoon of smoked paprika, one and a half teaspoons of cayenne, one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, one tablespoon of kosher salt, and one teaspoon of fresh ground black pepper. Whew, almost there. Now just mix all it together and place it on the stove over medium heat and simmer it for five minutes or until everything is dissolved and it's slightly reduced. Now, optionally, although worth it, would be to cold smoke it with some apple wood chips like I did here. I filled it with smoke, covered it, let it sit for 15 minutes, repeated that two to three times or until smoky to your liking. You could also use liquid smoke, but uh, I didn't tell you that. Okay, we're almost done. Once your ribs are ready and they're still hot, carefully wiggle out and remove each and every bone until you have a literal boneless rack of ribs. Brush it generously with your barbecue sauce, then use that piece of foil to carefully flip your ribs onto a foil lined baking sheet and brush the other side with barbecue sauce. You gotta be careful when flipping these because they will fall apart if you aren't. And then you're gonna cry, Papa's gonna be mad, it's not good. Then just pop that under the broiler for about two minutes or until the barbecue sauce is bubbling and caramelized. Give it one more brushing of sauce and broil one more time. Now, we're ready to assemble. Slice one of your hoagies in half, spread some softened butter on both of your cut sides, and toast in a pan set over medium heat until, well, toasted. Very thinly slice some sweet onions, and optionally you can place those in a bowl and give them a quick rinse with water. That'll help remove some of their bite. Drain them well. Then, as I've said many times before, slice your pickles into lengthwise sheets like this. These are dill pickles, by the way. Then just get your toasted hoagie, spread on some barbecue sauce, Cut your ribs so that they fit your sandwich properly, then lay your portion ribs onto the bread, top with your pickles, shingling them across the entire sandwich, and finally, your sliced onions. You can add additional barbecue sauce on top of that if you want, then add the top bun to crown your king. Now that looks like a proper rib sandwich that anyone would slap their grandma after eating. But also, maybe don't do that, all right? I'm not advising you to do that. Don't ever do some of these things that I say. It's a joke. I mean, come on, look at this thing. This or that, all right? That's all I gotta say. I cut it in half. It might, it might have done that if I had not cut it in half for the record. That's ground meat. This is a whole rib that we deboned ourselves. It's juicy. Look at that. You see catching that? Oh. A little poopy on my nose. Come on. Do I really need to explain why this is better? I shouldn't have to. Oh! Ah! I'm speechless. Tender, it's ribby, it's salty, it's rich, it's fatty, barbecue sweet. I think if you wanted to finish this guy off with another like fat drizzle of barbecue sauce, because I think that's what they do, you could finish it off like that. Uh. We need our taste tester in here. I ain't got nothing left to say. No! Vicar, no. ah. I think I'm just gonna have to feed you so you can't tell. Okay. You're gonna have to open much wider than that, buddy. <laughs> Scared man. Uh. Eating man. Oh. Ah. Going with the first one. I mean, there's not really a competition here. First one is just beautiful. It's like the perfect bite. This is a million times better on every front. Like they could make this a normal menu item. It wouldn't have the hype behind it. Yeah, that's it. That's the key. They could make this a normal menu item. There would be no hype. So anyway, long story short, McRib, but better, a legend, well, excuse me. McRib, a legendary menu item for some reason taken by force. You wanna know what else got a rib-based chin check? 
Don't forget about merch. Oh, I know we're about to go to B-roll, but I had to remind you it just dropped. Okay, link in the description. Please, please. We worked really hard on this. Anyway, back to B-roll. B-roll. Guys, and that is it. So we made the McRib sandwich, and you know what? We we did it. We we more than did it. For one, it's already a automatic win with the homemade bread and the perfect ribs. I mean, that's the whole sandwich, but it's already a win because we made those ribs out of actual ribs. They're unctuous, succulent, juicy, fatty, melt in your mouth. This was a chin check for the McRib, and we we did it. We did it, and I feel very very good about it. I couldn't be more happy. Let me know what you guys think. How did we do? Let us know in the comments. What else do you want to see on Butt Better? It's been a while since I've asked you that, and I'd like to ask you now. I'm, I'm listening. Papa is always watching. Okay, so just comment, let me know. You can DM me on Instagram, all that good stuff. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you.